Hello everyone! I hope you're ready for another adventure here on Martin Luther King Day because today's adventure is going to be a little golden book about Martin Luther King Jr. Always remember that as we go through these stories and learn about these amazing people, all you have to do is press the CC button in your YouTube link to be able to follow along with the story. Now. I think Madam Owl is going to be the best person to join us for today's adventure. Are you ready to learn about Martin Luther King Jr., Madam Owl? Madam Owl is ready. Let's begin. Martin Luther King Jr. led the movement calling for equal rights for all Americans. His boyhood home was filled with love. Martin had an older sister called Chris and an older brother named Alfred Daniel. Their mother, Alberta, spoke softly and was kind. It was very easy for Martin to talk to her. Martin's father, Martin Sr., was a large man with a booming voice. He was a minister of the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. The church was filled with songs. Martin loved music and sang in the church choir. He enjoyed Sunday school and had many friends there. Martin got along with everyone, the children, the parents, and the teachers. But sometimes, Martin's life was sad. Martin had a good friend that he played with almost every day. Then they turned six. Martin went to a school for black children, and his friend went to a school for white children. One day, the boy's father told him he could no longer play with Martin because he was black. Heartbroken, Martin ran home and cried to his mother. That night at dinner, Martin's parents told him that was his duty as a Christian to love everyone even when he was angry at them. Martin's mother also said he should always feel a sense of somebodiness, that he was important even though the outside world was telling him he was not simply because of his skin color. In those days, the southern United States, black people could only drink from water fountains labeled color and they were not even allowed into many restaurants and stores. This was called segregation, the segregation of blacks and whites. As he grew up, Martin's heart began to grow heavier and sadder. He tried to remember his mother's words, that he was somebody, that he was important, but it wasn't easy. One day, Martin's father took him shoe shopping. Even though the store was empty, the shopkeeper told him that they had to go to the back of the store and wait to be served. Mr. King became angry. If he couldn't buy shoes for his son in the front of the store, he wouldn't buy them at all. Taking hold of Martin's hand, he marched out. I don't care how long I have to live with this system, I will never accept it, he said. Martin would go up feeling the same way as his father. Martin was a very good student. He even skipped two grades. Before starting Morehouse College at the age of 15, he took a summer job in Connecticut. Things were different for black people. In the North, Black and white children went to the same schools. There were no separate water fountains. Everyone could shop in the same stores. Martin Luther King had a dream. He dreamed that these things could happen in the South too. Was there any way he could help people change the laws to make his dream come true? Martin decided to spend his life helping black people. He thought perhaps he could become a minister. He could reach people with his words, so he became an assistant minister at his father's church and went to seminary. Later, Martin entered Boston University. There, he met Coretta Scott, who was studying to be a singer. On their first date, they talked about how hard it was to be black in the United States. They talked about how people could live together in peace instead. After only one hour, Martin was sure he would marry Coretta one day, and he did. 
After Martin and Coretta got married, a letter arrived from a church in Montgomery, Alabama. The church leaders invited Martin to give a sermon there. If he did a great job, they would make him their minister. On a clear winter day, Martin drove from Boston to Montgomery. He knew his words had come from his heart and he could help people find their strength to live their faith. And Martin got the job. With his words, Martin told church members to go out and vote. Voting was a way to change unfair laws against black people. With his words, Martin helped organize protests. He told black people not to ride the buses in Alabama. Martin and others didn't think it was fair for black people to be forced to ride in the back. And with his silence, Martin and many others sat at whites only lunch counters. One summer day, Thousands of people traveled to Washington for the March on Jobs and Freedom. Martin was the last to speak that day. I have a dream, his voice boomed, that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. Thousands of people shared Martin's dream hand in hand. They walked through quiet valleys, over steep hills, and along busy highways, their hearts filled with hope for equality. Martin won important awards for his work. Sadly, he did not leave to see his dreams come true, but he did see the day when the laws were changed so that Americans of all colors were allowed to go to school together, sit in restaurants together, and shop at the same stores. Each day, people honor him when they visit his memorial in Washington, D.C. Martin Luther King Jr. will be forever remembered as a leader who fought for equal rights and freedom for all. In many places around the world, this fight continues and Martin's words and dreams live on. That was an amazing story to read on Martin Luther King Day. What did you learn, Madame Owl? I liked that part too. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on the next adventure. And we'll see you on the next adventure here with Wayne Reads. Thank you for joining us. And I can't wait to see you for the next one. Bye-bye.